Welcome to 20 Fingers 2 Brains. This is part 19 of online shopping cart project. If you have not watched the previous video, please go through all the videos so that all the changes are clear to you. In part 19, we are going to discuss about how we are ca calculating the stock available and the design of the product stock page. So here we have opened the shopping cart project in Visual Studio. Here we have a page product start dot ASPX. To add a new product stock dot ASPX page, click on admin, add new item, web page using master form, name it as product stock dot ASPX. Click on add. When you click on add, there will be a prompt to select the master page. From that list, select admin master dot master and click on OK. When you click on OK, product stock dot ASPX will be added in the admin folder. So when you open it, initially it will be completely empty. The content flows folder will be empty. So let's see how we are designing it. Click on source. In the source view, first of all we have we are adding a div. Inside the div, we are adding a label as we are doing with all the previous pages. Then we are adding a horizontal line. The text of the label is product stock. Then we have a table. Here we have one table row, second table row, and third table row. The first table row, we are adding a drop down list. The drop down list, we have named it as DDL category. The auto post bracket set as true. And there's an event attached to it whenever a user change the selected item in the drop down list so this will first tr here we have the first tr we have added drop down list you can add a drop down list from the toolbox we have a drop down list drag and drop it here you can name it as ddl category here we named it we have named it as ddl category in the event you can double click on selected index change when you double click on selected index change this empty event will be generated the next we have a horizontal line in the second td second row we are adding in panel and we have named the panel as pnl stock report so here we have a radio button list the same Similar to the drop down list, we have set auto post back equal to true. Repeat direction is horizontal. We have some font and we have a selected index change event. And this radio button list is having three list items one is out of stock, limited stock, and enough stock. The value is 0, 1, and 2 simultaneously. Then we have the selected, we have kept the first out of stock value as true. So initially when the page loads, the initial selected value will be out of stock. Then inside the panel, we have a horizontal at the top and horizontal line at the bottom. Then in the third table row, we are adding a div and we are naming the ID. We are setting the ID of the div as no records to display. Then we have the visible equal to false. Initially, the div is visible to false and we are adding a value of run at equal to serve for the div. Inside the div, we have a label which carries the text, no records available. So this div will be visible whenever there is no record to show for any of the three values. After the div, we have a grid view. As we have seen, our, seen in our previous video, this grid view is similar to that. To get a grid view, go to toolbox. From the data, drag and drop a grid view. To change the design, select an auto format and select whatever design you want. Click on apply. When you click on apply, the design will be applied to here. Here we have added few more properties like auto generate column equal to false and the width is 100% as that of the page. Then we have this, these properties are automatically generated when we select the format from the grid view design. 
then to the column section in the column section we are mentioning the columns because auto generate columns is false here we are adding the name category name available stock price and the image of that stock so we get this design view as these columns are getting bind from the data table which we get from database so here we have the text design as written as data bound so this was the design of product stock pretty simple it was similar to what we've discussed in our previous videos for other pages so let's move to the code view of this page right click on this page view code you can also go from product stock product stock .asp .cs file this will take us to the same page so here we have few methods so initially when the first time for the first time when the page is getting loaded we call get categories we call this get categories to bind to the drop down list let me run this so that you get a quick, clear understanding we have the product stock so this is the label then we have this drop down list so to get this drop down list we are calling get categories then we have created an object of shopping cart which is a part of business layer so for that we have inherited shopping cart dot business layer and we have to get the to use, make use of data table we are inheriting system dot data after that once we get all the records from the uh, we are calling this get categories method in shopping cart dot cs file this will get us all the categories we have made use of this get categories method at a lot of places in our project so we have already discussed this when we get the category first we check whether the data table contains any rows or not when it contains the row we are binding all the records to the data table and from the data table we are binding it to the drop down list so this is the code this four to five lines of codes are enough for binding the data from the data table to the data list so first of all we need to inform the data drop down list about the value field and the text field the text field will be category name and the value field will be id category id then the data source is the data table itself then we are binding the data binding the data table to the drop down list once this is done we are adding a default value the first value will be all products and the the text will be all products and the value will be zero and by default when the page loads for the first time the selected value will be zero so initially when we load the page we get all products after that we are caught calling get available stock so initially when the page loads we call this method get available stock so this is what we are looking for now uh, here we again create a object of shopping cart and inside that object we pass two parameters what is the category id and what is the stock requested so as you see from this design view whenever user clicks on something suppose mobile so when user select mobiles or when user selects laptops so there is some category id so this is the category id and there are three type of stock one is out of stock limited stock or enough stock so so the values are 0 1 and 2 so when user selects we get the category id from the drop down list and we get the stock type from the radio button list and we pass this values to the method get available stock this get available stock we have created in we have created this method in shopping cart.cs file so here we pass both the parameters stock type and category id to the store procedure sp get available stock so the stock type is passed in the parameter stock type category id is passed in the parameter category id then we have sp get available stock so this code will call the data access layer from the data access layer we will get a call to the store procedure so let's open this store procedure sp get available stock 
so to create a stored procedure you can open which a stored procedure which you have already created so it will open, get open in this manner you can change the syntax create procedure dbo sp get available stock and here we have two parameters the names of these two parameters should match with the name which you provided in your c sharp code so here we start with begin then after the begin we have a try catch so begin try then we declare few variables first we declare start range and end range both are of type integer then we have a if we have three ifs to for three conditions because we have three stock type one is out of stock limited stock and enough stock so so we have three type but if stock type is zero then we set the range from zero to zero start range is zero end range is zero if stock type is one the start range is from one to ten if stock type is two the start range and end range is from eleven to ten thousand so in this way based on the start stock type we are setting the start range and end range so that we can get the records from the database based on this start and end range after that we check the category id if the category id is zero that means the user is requesting the stock for all the products if the category id is not zero the user is requesting for a particular product for example laptop or clothes or paintings so let's consider is it as category equal to zero if the category id is zero we have a select query to get the records from the database so this select query will get and determine us how we are getting the available stock so what we do is we have created a stock table so inside this stock table we are getting some records from a select query so this select query will get the records and insert it inside the stock table so let's understand this select query now oh, we are selecting records from products p category c and customer products cp so from for initially we have products p then we are joining in doing an inner join with category c on category dot category id equal to p dot category id then we have a left join on customer product cp which is on cp dot product id equal to p dot product id then we need to do some calculation about the total products and which are available and products which are already sold so we need to do a group by on all these parameters which are available here so we do a group by on cp dot product id name price image url category name and product quantity and to find the total products sold we do a sum of cp dot total product if it is null then we do it z consider it zero then to find the available stock we do a, a subtraction of p dot product quantity minus the total products which are sold so the available con product quantity minus available product sold will give us the available stock so when once we are ready with the initial table stock table we apply a where condition based on the available stock so based on this available stock we determine what is the request made by the user if then in the where condition we mention between records should be between the start range and end range so if the record we have already got the start range and end range and based on the category id we are determining the available stock between start range and end range if user uh, pass some category id so in that case what we are doing is the query remains the same only before goodbye we are adding a condition of category id rest all query will seem remain same this same query will get the result only for that particular category id so this will get the result only for category id 1 which is mobile phones or laptops whatever it can be and the rest code like available stock between this and this will remain same 
so when user selects or this the records keeps on changing so if you see the limited stock for paintings is 4 so it is between 1 and 10 so it is considered as a limited stock or enough stock if we select all product for girls winter jacket we have 13 items so it is enough stock because it is above 10 and out of stock out of stock will show all those records which are zero so this store procedure will return all the records in the form of a data table and that data table we are binding it to the grid view so in the grid view which first we check dt.rows.count is greater than zero if it is greater than zero then we go and bind the data table and set the visibility of the grid view as true and no records to display as false because there are some records to display and if there are no records to display then we set the visibility of the div no records to display as true and grid view available stock equal to false so that's what happening in this case if we go in enough stock we have some records so this will execute the if part and the else part will not be displayed so this was a very simple code how we are tracking the available stock out of stock and enough stock parameters for all these products so that the admin now uh, this page is useful because the admin wants to know what all things are there and what all things are need to be added to the shopping cart so that the customers can buy it so this was about product stock in our next video we will see the income report page the income report page will show the product sold and the total income earned in, in a particular parameter for example we have this year this month and today so thank you for watching this video if you have any query in understanding this video feel free to ask put a comment or drop a message on our facebook page that's it for today thank you have a nice day